that is recording and you may start when you are ready. Alright, uh, good afternoon, good afternoon everybody. Uh, this is our central motion capture project. It's called Project Liquid, which is the name of our villain. Basic uh, bit behind this scene is it's not really a battle scene as such, it's a prologue to the battle scene, so it's a build up. And um, it's basically Peter Parker in a lab, like he's doing his sciencey stuff looking at the substance. The villain comes in, they have a bit of a punch up, not the main fight, but you know, they, they exchange blows. And then the villain steals the thing, goes up um, a ventilation shaft, and that's the basic rundown scene. Right, well, uh, this is our storyboard. It's quite blank, but you'll see why later. Uh, basically, running through starts, uh, we have Pete Parker you know, uh, examining the substance, and the, uh, our villain is based off the alien symbiotes. We'll come into that more in a bit. But essentially, he comes down on a rope, similar to how Spider Man does, checks up the scene very quickly, silently, and then he'll go back up. The next shot is again uh, Spider Man's working, or Peter Parker's working, and he hears a drip, to which he turns around, but it's simply just a sink that he thought he uh, you know, stopped earlier. So he uh, moves over to it. At this point, it's a shot uh, uh, down low, and you can see the other the villain's legs as he kind of approaches and lands on the ground silently. It then cuts to sideways as he's walking towards, and his hand begins to morph, and he changes from like a simple human hand into and it morphs into cl uh, claws, and you hear like a crackling sound. Uh, it then cuts to um, as he goes up, goes up behind um, Peter Parker, and then swings at him. Peter Parker comes down and ducks and spins around and comes back up and uppercuts him, as you can see there. Our villain stumbles back onto the table. Peter Parker then uh, spins around and begins to search for his uh, web slingers. This is the amazing Spider-Man where he couldn't you know, just shoot them out of his hands. He had to you know, make that. And while that's happening, uh, our villain realizes what he's looking for is in that test tube onto the, on the table he's just you know, uh, stumbled upon. He grabs it. Peter Parker turns around to see that our villain is missing, where he just hears uh, some rumbling. And the camera pans around to see that one of the uh, vents, like uh, what is it, has been, uh, the entrance has been torn off. And you know, there's claw marks and slime, and it just cuts to Peter Parker. He kind of like walks up to it, looks inside the vent. The camera's from inside the vent facing him, and it kind of just uh, slowly zooms out and fades to black. And like, this is an overtype thing. Okay, next shot. Josh, should we do this? Okay, um, yeah, we, deci we decided to, um, after looking at loads of different characters, um, we decided um, that uh, like Venom would be a good starting point as sort of like a, a symbiote sort of thing. Um, and then on that level, um, Carnage as well, which is sort of like a like a variant of it, and he can like sort of have it. He has like blades coming from his black back, and he has like the claws, sort of like what we wanted to do. Um, we wanted him to sort of like be almost like transforming a bit like um, the the guy in Terminator. So when he gets shot, sort of you know he like morphs a bit and that sort of thing. And so you can't sort of properly damage him. Um, without doing something beforehand, that sort of thing, and so it like takes over a host as well as you can see in that one from Spider-Man Three, and and so like within like Liquid, it's probably like a host of a person that he's like overtaken, but you don't know who that is, sort of thing. So that might come later in the film. Oh, so yeah, we went for a green color scheme, green and black, and uh, oh, you can see the spikes in the back. Um, from the sketch, you can see that these retract in and out, and um, we're planning on modelling them so they go back into the body and come out. Mm. Right. Uh, for our environment concept, the one thing we really wanted to avoid is kind of just, you know, like your school laboratory, you know, gas taps everywhere, Bunsen burners, and just that kind of like quite white colour palette. So what we looked into is uh, well, some of the government official laboratories, you've got uh, DEA, CDC, and as well we looked into some of the uh, uh, color palettes from games such as well, Mods, Black Mesa, and as well just Half-Life, because they're slightly dingy, but we're all still kind of having like a clean and professional feel, and a lot of glass as well from the Black Mesa, and then we just looked at general uh, apparatus that you would use. Okay, um, this is um, our uh, like environment. Uh, the top one is uh, the capture area. Um, they didn't feed because I don't know, I just said it didn't feed. Um, though I've put uh, two of the tables in, and those are actually two of the tables uh, from here, that's why they're missing. Um, <laughs> um, and so those are all measured out, so that's all in scale. That's what is going to be in like uh, the live action, that's what they're going to see as they're moving around to stop them from going through any tables or anything like that. And then this, uh, the lower one, is what's going to be shown in uh, 3D. So you can see that, ta that table on the right is going to become uh, a table with a sink in it, and possibly a shelf above it and either side are going to be uh, just cupboards 
and the cupboard at the top one, so that's going to be on the left when you're facing the sink, that's going to be where uh, Spider-Man would go to get his uh, web slingers, so he'd turn to that one and maybe like root around in some drawers at the bottom. And the other table, um, as you can see at the top one, that's going to be um, where he is uh, examining the test tube in the first place, so you can see he turns to the right. And there's going to be a blue door with a window in the top, sort of very sort of laboratory style, some cables on the floor, a whiteboard, a periodic table, very sort of standard things. And then sort of some filing cabinets in the corner. So it's sort of like it's his sort of like little private laboratory sort of thing, somewhere where he can sort of work on his own stuff and he's got his own storage space. So next what we have is a pre-visualization. It's not an animatic. Uh, keep in mind, uh, keep in mind it is just a pre-visualization. We just ran it through very quickly. We put the tables that we're going to use uh, in the mocap suite and just worked around with how it's going to look. And what we've also done is each of the shots, for the most part, we've kept in mind about how we're going to composite it. So a lot of these are actually quite reminiscent of like, uh, like what you'd see in a theatre. And it's all been done to be very easily you know, compositable. Okay. Also, 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 um, also, Sam is Spider-Man and I am Liquid in this. Just turn it up, don't turn it up a bit. This is simply the beginning. Does this, you know, doing a science thing, doing a props to work with. So he kind of shields his uh, test tube, and then to be that way, we show it's important before it puts back down. Goes up and just turns off the sink. <laughs> so there he's looking for his web slingers. Liquid grabs the test tube. And we look, and of course, Liquid's gone. Well, we can't mark it out, that's where the vent would be, and that's Spider Man looking up inside it. So it's not great, but it shows we really have thought about the choreography, uh, the shots, and all that, and how it's going to be composited. And this is our schedule. We've gone into uh, you know who's going to do what, and the main point is you know, someone basically always has something to do. Should I keep looking at it? Mm -hmm. So thank you for your time. Do you have any questions? Ben? Um, the more between the hands, um, how would you go around? Uh, just be a morph modifier on the mesh, and we just have to animate it ourselves. But it's quite simple, it's literally just, you know, uh, first we wanted to go for a sword, that's a bit time consuming, you know, that would uh, really mess around with the textures. So just simply be changing the things into hands and just pointing them, so actually scaling them, really. Anyone else? Any other questions for us? Well, the test tubes and the props are going to be done in 3D? Or yeah. Except for uh, the one that Liquid picks up. Okay. But of course, you know, there's a science lab here, so we can just go borrow one of those. Okay. Um, well done. I think that's really, really good. Uh, what I'm impressed with is the fact you seriously have thought out your floor spacing requirement and your, you've measured the floor, you've looked at where the props are going to go, you've done a diagrammatic, you've got uh, an exact approximation of where things are going to be in relation to your actor and, and everything's been thought out, even going as far as doing a previous. I think that was really good. I like the humour in it as well. It was quite good. Yeah. So, uh, no, I'm, I'm very impressed with that. Um, Jason, I'm sure you've got a few questions. This is good cop, bad cop relationship. <laughs> Guess who's the bad cop? <laughs> Okay, um, when I can actually spell, right, okay. Storyboards are okay. Uh, it looks very static, although your previous shows that's not the case. Um, the story you might need to tweak the boards a bit to show narrative. You, you get a good idea of narrative flow, but you're not really getting any of what the camera's doing, and you've nothing to suggest what's happening with the camera, any movements, any zoom, anything like that. It looks really static and that's something you might want to have a look at. Um, it's nice that you've mapped out your environment and you've tested it out and that's the important thing. However, no 3D examples yet. Not yet. You need to double check because you're going to need those to actually see it in Motion Builder. Remember, you can actually have sets much, much bigger than that. A lot bigger than that. Um, you say you're going to be doing some curve compositing? Yeah. You're already going to think that one through because against a cluttered background, you're never, never going to get a clean roll-up. It's never going to happen. 
Um, if you're going to use a virtual camera, you'll be what we won't be as bad. But against anywhere where you haven't got a curtain, you're never going to get a clean map. It's never going. No matter how good you are, no matter how amazing you are, it will never happen because you'll have to do it frame by frame and roto. Yes, it's not something awesome. you want to do frame by frame because your head will break. Go um, on. How are you going to do the um, villain upside down? Uh, that loops to be a case of uh, if you grab the. Um, the biped node, there's a, I forget the exact term, but it essentially allows you to, he retains all his mocap data while you're being able to move him through the scene. So you literally just rotate him upside down. And so what we'd actually do is when it comes to mocap him, he'd be kind of doing it upside down. So you'd literally just have to kind of very quickly kind of crouch and then rise up and then bring himself back down and we just flip it. Okay. Just a quick one. Um, one CG character or two? Uh, well, originally we are going to do one and we are going to try and composite from live action with Peter Parker, but we may have to rethink you, that. You, I would seriously suggest thinking about plan B. Because if you can't, then you're going to have to go to 2CG. In many ways, it makes it a bit easier. It makes it a lot easier. But also the fact that if you are going to be shooting with a camera on the green screen, that you've then got to consider you're going to have two people, mark, one person mark it up, one person there, and then the third person with the camera is going to get really close up really fast. Um, and it's not going to be easy to do. Try it out before, I know obviously we're type time, but get it boxed and get it tested before you go any further. Make sure you can actually do what you say you could do. I've actually written down here: is it doable? Um, so you need to test it. Because it's, amb it's cool, it's ambitious. Make sure you be damn sure it would work. Okay. Anyone else? No. I think the, from a presentation point of view, it could have been. Um, you were blocking Cat out quite a lot, whether she was hiding away from you or not. And yeah, she's, she's hiding, she's always hiding. And when it was a case of nicely introduced, and here she comes parting through the waves, and then it was, yep, yeah, and it was bam, 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 and then that was it. And I think you could have involved Cat a bit more. Yeah? I know she doesn't like, doesn't like speaking to public very much, do you, Cat? But it could have been a little bit better presentation wise if you had that. Okay? Apart from that, really good. Like it. You thought it out. Let's see it happen. Well done.